Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. Thank you so much for stopping by again today. Truly grateful. So many channels you could be watching, you're watching, man. This is the shocking truth of life as an expat in the Philippines. It's damn good. And I know you see that title, you think, well, it's going to be something negative. No, you can focus on negative if you want to. But the reason why I've been coming here on and off for 14 years, and I've been here almost five years in a row, is because as an expat, I've got a damn good life over here. Not just me, but thousands of expats. If you don't believe me, stop one of these South Koreans and ask them. They come over here at twice the rate as Americans or any Westerners. They're the number one tourists. I like to get an interview with one of them just to find out why they love the Philippines so much. Because I know why we do. You know, the minute you get off the plane, you're an honorary member of the Keith Richards Club. I mean, you're an instant celebrity. You don't get that anywhere else, but in the Philippines, really. You're given the benefit of the doubt over here. Everything, they think everything positive, really, about you. And remember I tell you that a lot of times, Filipinos thinking that you're rich, it's not a bad thing if you know how to conduct yourself over here. But I just want to talk about a few things of what makes this life over here so damn good. But before I get started, let me talk about the meet and greet that I'm having March 27th, Monday, March 27th, which will be in the morning Filipino time. It's uh, from 12 to 4 in Lapu-Lapu City at Cafe Engelberg. That's right across the street from the Grand I mean, the Gaisano Grand Mall, Basak. It's easy to find. It's over there by the outlet malls. Just Google it. Catch a grab or whatever. If you want to come over and meet some good people, have some good conversations, some good food, make some connections, come on, man. You're all invited. Because from now on, I'm going to have my meet and greets in Cebu. It's just so many expats here. And I think there's so many that need to come out of isolation, man. You know, most of us, we come over here, we're only really dealing with the young lady we marry, or we're living with, and her family. I think it's very, very important. And that's one of the good things about living over here in the Philippines as an expat. There's some damn good people over here, man, that you need to be meeting. And that's what I want to do. I just want to bring people together. But... One of my subscribers is the one that gave me the idea for this video. He said something real casually on my live stream last week. He said, you know, the Philippines is the closest thing to Western culture in all of Asia. And I was like, wow, you know, he's right. That's a good thing. A guy named Phil Stevens. I met him at the meet and greet that they have down in Dumaguete. And I said, man, that's just one of the good things about you know, the Philippines and and why it's such a great place for expats because we live a damn good life over here, man. Um, and I just want to talk about some stuff today that kind of backs that up and kind of, you know, I want to invite you to come over here and see the place. It may not be for you, okay, but that doesn't make it a bad place, but at least come over here because more and more people are coming, man. I've met hundreds of guys. Not only is this the first time in Asia, but it's their first time out of the country. First time they've ever did a trip. So, yeah, I'm going to start out by saying the Fountain of Youth is here in the Philippines. I did a whole video on this about two years ago, and I just want to kind of talk about that a little bit. What do I consider the Fountain of Youth? Well, it's the 365 Days of Sunshine over here. I mean, the sun is really the son of God that they talk about, okay? The life giver, the life preserver, the life maintainer. You can't even imagine life without the sun because there would be no life. It's a nurturer. It has all the nutrients that you need. Trust me, the sun is good for being young, okay? Then you've got the influence of beautiful young women. Don't underestimate. The influence of a woman. All you have to do is think about your mother. Okay. You're going to be younger by default. Because you're dealing with a younger woman. Most of the women we're dealing with are about half our age. 
some even younger. And they make you feel younger. Okay, because you you just you're more active, you're doing more things, okay, which which comes to the next one. You're more active over here in the Philippines. You're gonna walk more than you've ever walked before, if you're capable of walking. It has a lot to do with the sun always being out. Because it's summertime all the time over here. That's a great time, man. You know, it's it's you're always in vacation mode. That can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. But you're going to be out more. So you're going to be walking more. And then if you want to work out, get some type of routine. If you just want to ride your bike, play tennis. You're going to be more active here, guys. I promise you that. Because of the sun, because of the young lady. You're going to get active. Then you're going to tweak your diet. Because a lot of those old comfort foods that... You're used to over at home. You're not going to be able to get them here. But what you can get here is fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh seafood right out of the ocean. Some of the best chicken I've ever tasted. And because of that, I was able to drop 30 pounds. Now, I uh, picked some of it back up because I had some little nagging injuries. I believe I broke my wrist. I, I certainly sprained my wrist when I had a bike accident. I had a shoulder injury. Then I had a knee sprain from playing 30 games of tennis back to back. But now that I've got that taken care of, I'm back doing my routines. And when you put all of that together, the sunshine, the women, getting more active, tweaking your diet, man, it just makes you feel younger. You're going to go back. I'm 60 years old. I'll be 60 years old in May. I feel like I'm 40, man. I promise you, I feel like 40. I don't feel any different than I did when I was 40. And I'm going to give you some, tell you something funny about me turning 60 because you know over here when you turn 60 in the Philippines, you're considered a senior citizen, right? So I'm in the shower today and I'm taking a shower. You know, I look down, man, and I've got some gray hair growing out of my balls. And I was like, this is a rite of passage, you know. You can't deny, you know, you're getting old. If you got gray hair coming out of your balls, you're getting old. So I say, you know, how am I going to handle this? You know, there's few things you can do that I could do. I could shave my balls. It's just like I shave my head. You can have that gray, but that's not why I'm shaving my head. But I could do that. But I don't want to shave my balls. Okay. I could dye my balls, you know, because dyeing your hair over here, it's normal. It's nothing out of the ordinary. People do it all the time. You know, Filipinos, they love their hair over here. They don't want to get gray. Very seldom will you see a gray Filipino over here. I don't care how old they are. I could do that. Or I could just accept the fact that, you know, I'm about to approach 60, and that's that's a part of being 60. That's a part of being in the fourth quarter of your life is that you got gray hair growing out of your balls. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let it grow, and then it's just going to be salt and pepper balls, I guess, you know. But I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to panic, okay? I'm just going to grow old gracefully. But, yeah, that fountain of youth is real, guys. And I'm going to tell you something else the Philippines got going for it. There's no Big Shirley here. There's no Big Shirley sightings in the Philippines. Not too many five foot four inch, 171 pound Western women with a 38 inch waist and a bad attitude walking around here in the Philippines. And that's a good thing. Some guy was talking about most of the women over there, the customer service workers in America, they're post, uh, what, what do you call it? Menopause. Yeah. He said the post menopausal and man, they're angry. At the world. And it's, you don't have that over here. But what you do have. Is you have millions and millions of fit. Feminine friendly fantastic women here. To choose from. And that's a good thing man. That's a very good thing. And that's why the shocking truth. About life for an expat over the Philippines is simply this. It's a damn good life over here. Not just for me, but for thousands of others. Not just Westerners, but other Asian countries. They get it. They come over here in droves. 
They know the Philippines is a special place. But if you want to focus on the traffic, the poverty, the trash, the pollution, and all that stuff, then go ahead. The sanitation. You're going to waste your life away, man. Life is too short, man. It goes by too quick. I'm looking for the positive in everything. And remember, it's summertime all the time over here. You'll never get tired of this place, man. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. It's cold right there right now. The guy I went to eat uh, lunch with yesterday at the House of the China, he's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's cold over there. I got a friend, Stephen and Ellie. They bought a house in General Santos. They're still living in Wisconsin. They've got 12 inches of snow there right now. But over here, it's summertime all the time. You're always in vacation mode. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing for me, man. So, yeah, the shocking truth, man, about life as an expat in the Philippines is it's a damn good life. So if you're in America, you sleep. It's very late already. So I'm going to speak to your subconscious mind. When you get up in the morning to go to church, because it's going to be Sunday, When some of you have to go to work. You go to the grocery store, the gym, get a cup of coffee. And you see somebody out in the street or wherever you see them. Buy them something to eat. Buy them something to drink. Give them a few dollars. If you're in the Philippines, it's about, I guess, 4 a.m. 4 p.m. I'm sorry. Uh, not a day goes by. I don't help somebody. We had to do the 1,000 peso pandemic giveaway drawing yesterday because I didn't have the spin wheel with me. Not a day goes by. I don't help somebody over here. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. We help other people. We help ourselves. Take care. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And I'll see you next time. Hold on. Don't leave because following this, I'm going to show you the hotel room I'm staying in. Shout out to Q, Quincy Williams, man, one of my subscribers. I consider him a friend now. He put me up in this nice place. Five-star hotel, by the way, Radisson Blue in Cebu for a couple of nights, chill with him, you know, he's a great guy, man, I hope to interview him, because he's got an interesting story, but I'm going to show you this place, because y'all know I'm a two-star guy, and, I, and I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm going to show you the room, I'm going to show you the pool, I was going to show you the gym, but there's a lot of people in there, man, and I just didn't feel comfortable taking that camera in there, guys, so enjoy, thanks for watching again. Thank mm -hmm. you.